Hello everyone, today we will be, we will be discussing Maria Izquierdo and how her paintings gave new meanings to womanhood and femininity in Mexico's patriarchal society as well as analyzing three of her works and how they they relate to this prompt. A little bit about Maria Izquierdo is her full name is Maria Zenobia Izquierdo Gutierrez. She was born in 1902 in San Juan de los Lagos, Jalisco, but relocated to Torreón, Coahuila at the age of five after her mother married Dr. Nicanor Valdez Rodriguez. Her mother's marriage meant Izquierdo would spend her childhood being raised by her grandparents and other relatives all throughout small towns or pueblos in northern Mexico. Her grandmother and aunt were very religious, which meant Izquierdo was surrounded by the traditions of Catholicism. At the young age of 14, her mother and family forced her to marry a military man and began and begin a family of their own. Izquierdo's family moved in 1923 to Mexico City, where she was able to study art at the prestigious San Carlos Academy of Fine Arts and become a professional artist in the later years. During her time at the Academy in 1929, she met and worked with Diego Rivera, who wrote that, quote, her personality is like a painting, classically Mexican, end quote. Shortly after, Izquierdo separated from her husband and began living with fellow painter Rufino Tamayo. Living with Tamayo inspired her to use European avant-garde art and combine it with some elements of Mexican culture. Izquierdo's unique style granted her the opportunity to exhibit her paintings at the Modern Art Gallery in Mexico City in 1929. A year later, she became the first Mexican woman to have a solo exhibition in New York. Because of the exhibition, several doors began to open for Izquierdo, and her career took off. She was able to work. She was able to display her work in a number of countries, including Japan, France, India, and Chile. Just like millions of other women during her time, Izquierdo was a victim of misogyny countless times throughout her career. One of her most notable battles against misogyny happened in 1945 when she was hired to paint a mural on the government's building in Mexico City. Everything was prepared for her to begin her work when she was suddenly told that the project was cancelled. The reason for the cancellation was stated to be technical reasons. However, later on it was revealed that after consulting Raquel Tibol, Diego Rivera, and David Alfaro Siqueros, the artists believed it was an excessive project for an experienced artist such as Izquierdo. Moreover, she was against the objectification of women and stated they should be considered as important allies in the class conflict that was currently happening in Mexico at that time. In 1939, she openly criticized a group of feminist women and so-called pseudo-intellectuals. Izquierdo assured that they had nothing to do with authentic women since, quote, superiority does not exist, end quote. This was perceived to be a direct criticism to Frida Kahlo and other similar artists that, according to Izquierdo's ideals, instead of helping empower, instead of helping the empowerment of women, obstructed their emancipation. Unfortunately, in 1948, she suffered through many medical crises that left her right side paralyzed. And after seven long years of suffering, Maria Izquierdo finally passed away at the age of 53 at the hand of a stroke. The first art work that we will be discussing today is Madre Proletaria. The name of this artwork directly translates to proletariat mother. Proletariat is often used in reference to Marxism and it means workers or working class people regarded collectively. Madre Pro Pro Proletaria was made in 1944 and is an oil on canvas. This painting depicts a mother with mestizo features resting her head on the on her arm on a straw chair while holding her child there is also a dog a small white dog next to the mother curled up in a fetus position with a tearful expression 
Behind this mother is a woman with Eurocentric features, working away at a blanket. This may hint at how women with Eurocentric features, even in Mexico, where colorism is very prominent still today, were able to probably find more work than those women with mestizo features. A common theme seen throughout Izquierdos' work is loneliness and isolation. And this painting evokes feelings of pity and sorrow for the mother and the child. We, we can see, the audience can see that the mother feels very isolated and very alone. Maybe because there are not enough resources for her. Maybe she is a widow. This painting helps depict the hardships of being a mother during this era in Mexico. The next painting we will be discussing is Mujer Ante el Espejo, which directly translates to Woman in Front of the Mirror. This painting was made in 1934 and is a guauche on paper. This painting depicts a rather plump, naked woman sitting in front of a mirror with, a, with her robe around her legs. In front of her is a naked mannequin in front with an incredibly small waist, a large bust, and large hips. Again, we see the common theme of isolation and loneliness. This painting demonstrates how detrimental and poisonous female beauty standards are to women's health, a theme we still see today in today's society. Izquierdo made this painting in a way to show the empowerment and acceptance of all female bodies. The last painting we will be discussing is Sueño y Presentimiento, which directly translates to dream and a feeling. There isn't very a, a direct translation for presentimiento, but one can assume it means more of like a hunch. This painting was made in 1947 and is an oil on canvas. This painting is a self-portrait with Izquierdo in the window holding her own decapitated head whose hair was also tangling in between the trees that were outside, growing on the outside of the house. The, the decapitated head that Izquierdo is holding has tears rolling off its cheeks and watering the small garden below the windowsill. And on the walkway, the audience is able to see three bodies, three decapitated bodies, including her own, attempting to escape. It is known that this painting depicts her own nightmare on a painting. This is chilling to see because months later, only months later, Izquierdo suffers through her first stroke and her first of many strokes and is unable to complete this painting because she is left paralyzed on her right side and she was her right side dominant. Luckily, after many months of hard work and, and therapy, she was able to regain the ability to talk and to move which is how the painting was able to be finished. This painting shows that women also have inner monsters and issues to work through that they don't, that it isn't just men that have their own, their own things that they have to deal with and that, and that women are just pretty little creatures sitting there for, for, the man to enjoy to to look at and to appreciate no women also have depth and and nightmares and and 
thoughts of their own. Through these three paintings, Izquierdo was able to demonstrate how women how women can empower themselves. She was very ahead of her time in the sense of how women back then were felt oppressed by not only men who saw them as who saw other women as competitors in the artist field, but also by other women who had internalized misogyny inside themselves and believed that women should not be in this field at all and belonged inside a home to be caretakers for the children and caretakers only. Thank you for your time.